guys, I'm Suff with Take It To The Stage. Today we're going to be talking about the musical Rock of Ages. It's about rocks and different ages. <sighs> Emerald, you want to start us off? <laughs> Welcome to Take It to the Stage. Um, we hope you guys enjoyed last week's episode of Hairspray. We thought it was a good time to bring it up with everything that's going on. Um, I know Suff enjoyed Hairspray. Yeah? Yeah, it was interesting. I, I, did, I, I'm, I mean, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I dug it a lot. It was, <laughs> it was cool. Okay, I'm done. I can't do that anymore. I'm irritating cool. myself. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. Um, guys, we absolutely love when you interact with us on Facebook and Instagram. I'm having so much fun getting to talk back with you guys and hear what you think about what we're doing, and the excitement from you guys just fuels our excitement, so it's really, really hype. Yeah, it's super cool. Thank you all a bunch to everyone who's listening. Thank you for listening. Okay, <laughs> so this week's episode, we're bringing it back to the 80s with a little bit of Rock of Ages, as you heard Suff say earlier. Woo! Um, if you guys have heard of Rock of Ages, haven't heard of Rock of Ages, it's actually your favorite musical ever. I'm really excited to bring it to take it to the stage and talk about it a little bit. Um, my, forever ago, my senior year of high school, we actually got to do Rock of Ages here in little, little Montana. Forever ago. Forever. Not that long ago, actually. Like three years ago. <laughs> um, and I had so much fun with that show. It's There's just so much action, and it's so lively, and there's lights, and it's like all 80s music, so it was like super hyped the whole time. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to talk about it. Shall we get started? Let's go. Okay. I... I, I should preface this where I, I feel like I'm going to like this one a lot because I love 80s music and Def Leppard is one of my favorite 80s bands. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Um, factoid. Random fact. Um, the song Rock of Ages by Def Leppard is not in the musical. I figured. Which is weird because that's like the name, right? My two assumptions about this play, I, I don't know anything about it other than that I knew it was based in the 80s. Um, but my two ideas of what this musical was about was that it was either all about Def Leppard, which didn't <laughs> seem like it was probably a thing, because, like, <laughs> that probably wouldn't make a good musical. Oh. Um, or two, it was about all just random 80s stuff, and Def Leppard had nothing to do with it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yep. Well, a little bit of that. Kind of makes me sad that it's not in there, because Rock of Ages is a bop. <laughs> but, dude, that's, like, the first song I ever headbanged to. Really? Yeah. I was like... You know... I was, like, 12 when I first heard that song in my mom's truck. She bought an old Def Leppard CD, <laughs> and that's when I got introduced, and I was like, Rock of Ages! I'm, like, headbanging inside of the truck, and I was like, yeah, rock and roll! Dude, I have never headbanged. Like, oh, how do you do it without actually so having whiplash? The, the, the key to it is, like, you don't make the movement too jarring. Like, you're not, like, it's not, like, static, you know? Sure. Like, there's got to be a flow to it. So it's, like, are you, like, leading with your forehead or, like, your chin? Kind of like, your, like, your chin. Like, it's got to be, like, like a, falling. it's got to be, like, a, wa like, if you make a wave motion with your forearm and your hand, it's got to be, like, that but kind of body. motion. Yeah, and you got to get your body into it, too, because that, like, cushions, you know? Because uh -huh. if it's, like, just your head, like, all you're doing is just... Ow, that actually just a little bit of it that I just did hurt. Um, all you're doing is just smacking your brain into your skull over and over. You gotta like, but then there's the hardcore ones where you know it's like, and they're like just going hard. And that's when you're really feeling it. But right. at that point, the brain damage is worth it. <laughs> the damage has already been yeah. done. Like you can't hear anymore. You're at the concert. Might as well. Yeah, if you're like if you're like you're at a Slipknot concert. Like that's the only headbanging you can do is the kind that's damaging. Oh. Like otherwise you're not headbanging right. Wow. But if it's like if it's like Def Leppard or like even like most Metallica, I feel like fits that vibe. There's some Metallica that's like like the Slipknot vibe, right. where you gotta like you just gotta go. <laughs> you just gotta. You just gotta go. <laughs> but like the Rock of Ages, like you know, it's got that dun dun dun. Uh, it's got like the flow to it, mm -hmm. so you're just like 
you just go with that just flow, you know? It. Yeah, you just vibe. It's like the 80s version of like the bop, the like little bop vibe. Yeah. Yeah, okay. But yeah, no, I, I love headbanging. It's like, it makes you feel rock music in a whole different way. Okay, everybody, you hear that? Next time you go and listen to the Rock of Ages soundtrack, in which you will do after you listen to this podcast, make sure to headbang and really feel the music through your, yeah, your, your brain. <laughs> no, it enlightened me. I used to be like, why do people do that? That's so dumb. Because my dad did it. My dad was always a rocker. Yeah. And I was like, that looks like it hurts. And then I <laughs> That's got I, who I and then I got older and I was like, fuck yeah. <laughs> it was like, you know, like rage kind of thing. Right. Yeah. There yeah. you go. There you go. Headbanging. <laughs> Try it out. <laughs> okay. Talking about headbanging like it's a drug. <laughs> right. Please do headbanging. Only once. This is your brain. This is your brain on headbanging. <laughs> It's just like smooshed. It's a I feel like that, that applies more to headbanging than like actual drugs. <laughs> <laughs> like, like your your brain's just smashed. <laughs> okay, Rock of Ages, let's Rock go. Of ages. All right, guys. I have all of my synopsis and facts from themusicallyrics.com. Um, and shout yeah. out, shout out, shout out to themusicallyrics.com for always helping me out with that stuff, even though they don't know that I exist. Thank you. <laughs> you guys are bomb. All right, so Rock of Ages was written by Chris DiRenzo. Ooh. Yeah, he sounds like Italian. Yeah. Maybe I spice that up a little bit too much because um, Doug Nagel, shout out to Doug Nagel, he has made me like spice up every Italian word I see. It's okay, we like a little spice. A little spice. <laughs> um, the first production it was in 2009. And after oh, okay. 2,328 performances, it closed on January 18, 2015. No way. That's so, like, so they don't, many. like, like professionals don't do it anymore? Like, Broadway? Um, yeah, no, I don't think it has not been on Broadway. I don't even know if there's many people who have done it off-Broadway since then, but there's, um, Rock of Ages, uh, what I, when I was reading, it was saying, like, there's people in Japan doing it, and it's, like, definitely gotten around the wow, country. interesting. Because a lot of our, like, 80s music, it's, like, this is, like, 80s American music, and we're, like, spreading that throughout the country with the musical. Right. Um. Interesting. The show is designed to feel like a literal rock concert where characters break the fourth wall constantly. So That's cool. for those of you who don't know what the fourth wall is, it's basically like when you're watching a cartoon on TV and one of the characters looks directly through the TV into your soul and starts talking to you full full awareness that they're in a TV show and it's not real life. Right. So the characters are constantly like, hey, you, lady in the audience, and completely breaks from, like, being in character and talks to these mm -hmm. people, like, on stage. Just to remind everybody that this is a musical. Um, yeah, so that's interesting. That um, is cool. When we did it, there was, like, the back of the stage where, like, the pit was. Oh, for those of you who don't know what a pit is, it's um, where the band... Um, the band, quote unquote band, or like all the musicians sit, and that's where they play from for everyone to sing along with their beautiful sounds. Um, the pit was actually on the stage, like on like a they like made a stage on the stage for the for, for the, the for the, the music pit. of Rock of Ages. Right, so it looked like there was a band like in the back, and they just like chime in and start playing. That's cool. Yeah, it was really awesome. That's pretty cool. Um, okay, so. The show is a satire that pokes fun at the era of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Because all good musicals and plays are satires somewhere deep on the inside. Um, the show is filled with all the hits of the 80s, including Styx, Journey, Twisted Sister, Jefferson Starship, and Bon Jovi, and tons more. Nice. Um, it's hype. And so the whole musical is built around all these super well-known songs that people know. Right. And so even if you're like, oh, I don't really like musicals, but I like the 80s, you go see this musical and you're singing along because you know the songs. That's cool. Yeah. It kind of like bridges worlds a little bit. Hmm. Uh, so yeah. It makes me sad that Def Leppard's Rock of Ages isn't actually <laughs> in there. Like how can you call it that I if it's not know. in there? That should have been like the closing song. Uh, or something. Yeah, but like the closing song that is in there is like. Is it good? It's the closing song. I it's the you. closing song for life, man. I got Play you. the song at my funeral. Okay. Is it Round and Round by Rat? No. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, no. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. Sad. Is it Turn Up the Radio by Autograph? Definitely not. Dang it. You can keep trying throughout the show. Okay, I'll keep thinking. If you figure it out, I'll tell you. 
Okay. Those are two steps behind by Def Leppard. Wrong. <laughs> okay. okay, I'll stop now. <laughs> so let's kick it off with Act One. Lonnie Barnett, who serves as the show's narrator, sets up the story. So right at the beginning, he rolls up, the music starts playing, he rolls up, and he starts talking right to the audience. Fourth wall gone, immediately. Okay. Show begins, he's narrating, okay? He's like, in 1987, we're back in them 80s, an aspiring rocker named Drew Bol- Boley. I don't know why. <laughs> Not sure I'm saying his last name right. I'm probably never going to say it again. You're welcome. Works as a busboy in the Hollywood bar club called The Bourbon Room. Okay. Which is owned by Dennis Dupree and ass- and assisted by Lonnie, the narrator. Okay. Okay. And they sing, um, just like Paradise, but like mashed up with nothing but a good time. Okay. Really nothing but a good time. Epic. Down, 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 down. It's hype. And there's like the strippers are like dancing. Oh. They're not stripped, but <laughs> but they dance. They dancing like and everybody's dancing. It's like hardcore in the bar. Um, he falls. Drew falls instantly for a girl, Sherry Christian, who just arrived from Paloa, Kansas, hoping to make it big in acting. They sing Sister Christian. Bah, 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 bah. Yeah. Okay. Um, because her last name's Christian. Um, and Drew convinces Dennis to hire Sherry as a waitress. So she's, like, about to get mugged on the street. Slash, I think she gets mugged a little bit. And, um, Drew rolls up and he's like, hey, are you okay? Oh my gosh. And he's like, ooh, she fine. <laughs> and You sounded like one of our friends when you were like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I think you know who I'm talking I about. I think I know. Yeah. I think you know who if you're listening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and so then he, like, helps her. He's like, come with me. Come back with me to my job. It's chill there. So they go to the bourbon room, and he's like, hey, give her a job. And he's like, "Uh," Dennis is like, "Uh, I guess, sure, yeah, job. Here you go. Whatever. We need help. Okay? So everybody works at the bourbon room. A lot of stuff takes place in the bourbon room. It's the place to be. Okay? Okay. So it's kind of like our main setting for this. Mm Yeah. Definitely. So. A pair of gentlemen, oh, whoa, whoa, that are German developers, okay, one's named Hertz Kleinman and his son Franz. Um, Hertz and Franz. Hertz and Franz. They persuade the city's mayor to abandon the sex, drugs, and rock and roll lifestyle of the Sunset Strip and introduce clean living into the area, much to the anger of the city planner Regina. (laughs) So... Regina, when um we did the musical h- here in in Montana, I played Regina, okay, and she's like this like she's like the city planner and she like works for these people and she's like why are you trying to ruin the strip what are you doing and then she gets mad and becomes this like super activist and it gets really cool. Oh. Okay. So after that they sing we built this city. We built this city. I quick little fun fact. Yes. I used to be dumb. Oh. I used to think that that song's lyrics you were... used to be dumb? Uh, I used to think that the lyrics to that song were, we built this city on love and glue. Oh. And I was really confused. Really? Yeah, I'm, I'm dead. I'm not love even joking. Love and glue. Wow. Because the first time I heard that song was on GTA 5, mm. back when it first came out in like 2013. Mm-hmm. Or, yeah, 2013, 2014. Uh, so I was young. I was young. Yeah. And it plays on the radio, and I was like, we built this city on love and glue. <laughs> and my friend was like, what the hell are you doing? What? And I was like, I'm singing the song. It's on the radio. He's like, they say rock and roll. And, <laughs> and you I, were like. And I was like, dude, I swear to God, they're saying love and glue. It didn't make, it doesn't make sense to me, but that's what they're saying. That's definitely, And he's yeah. like, you need to listen to that song again. And I was like. Sure as heck. <laughs> rock, rock and roll. And roll. <laughs> so that's like a, a fun little dumb memory I have. It's <laughs> beautiful. I'm so glad. <laughs> yep. We built this city on love, love and, and glue, glue, folks. Somebody spin it, play it, make it. Okay. <laughs> um, when Dennis learns that part of the plan involves demolishing the bourbon room, he oh. believes the club can generate more money by having rock star Stacy Jacks and his band Arsenal, who recently announced their breakup, perform their last show. At the bourbon room. That's a badass name, Arsenal. 
Yeah, right? I'd listen to a band Arsenal. called Arsenal. Um, and they sing Too Much Time on My Hands. That's really cool because everyone's like, too, too, too much time on my hands. And like, it's like, it has some really cool stuff in the music. I really enjoyed okay. that one. Um, so yeah, she's just crazy. And like, Herz and Franz. Okay, <laughs> Franz is like kind of soft spoken and like quiet. And he like, kind of checking out Regina, and Je Regina's, like, all in her stuff. She's, like, mad, she's angry, she can't see past the red because they're trying to take away the city she loves, right? Turn it into clean. And Franz is, like, hello, woman. And she's, like, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, there's that. Um, so, he calls Stacy and convinces him to play the band's last show in the club where he had begun. So, Stacy Jacks had his first show, Arsenal did, at the Bourbon Room, and now they're going to have their last show at the Bourbon Room. Okay. And they're going to try to use that money to make enough money so that they don't get demolished, basically. They're gotcha. trying to take back the strip. Gotcha. Okay. So, as Drew struggles to write new lyrics because he's like a wannabe rock star, right? Um, he's like, sadly, like, writing lyrics. And, um, what's his butt? <laughs> uh, Dupree walks in, he's like... <laughs> What are you doing? Stop. That sounds horrible. Quit. <laughs> like, he, he just absolutely cannot rock star. And he's trying his hardest. Okay. So, he's trying to write lyrics to um, a song. And Sherry urges him to go after his dreams. And he sings, I want to rock. Hell yeah. <laughs> Twisted sister. <laughs> That's one of my all-time faves. Oh, everybody. I feel like even if you don't like 80s music, you know that song, you know? Yeah. Um... Regina begins protesting Herz and Franz' new redevelopment plans, and she sings, we're not going to take it. <laughs> right? More Twisted Sister! All of the songs, like, even just the titles fit really well. Like, With what's going on. Like, they built this musical around the music before, like, they, they didn't, like, try to shove the songs in. They made the That's super cool. Around. I like that a lot. Yeah. Okay, so, later... After arguing with her parents during a phone call, Sherry begins to discover feelings for Drew, who supports her dream of becoming an actress, right? Sherry's the one that he saved, right? Yes. Got her a job? Yeah. Okay. Um, also, Drew, auditioning to open for Arsenal, finds the lyrics he has been searching for and realizes that they have come from his feelings for Sherry. Ooh. Okay, and they sing a whole mashup of More Than Words slash Heaven Slash to be with you. Ooh. Heaven, oh. So it's like a big medley. Yeah. Nice. Huge. And like everybody like sneaks on the stage and there's everybody singing and they're like singing like separately, Drew and Sherry, but they're like singing about each other and they're like, oh, oh, oh. And she's also singing about how her parents suck. It's hype. Mm. One of the coolest things I think in music is when you can do a medley of songs mm. that like have no relation, but they just happen to work really well yeah. together. It's so dope. It looks, it's so dope. Oh, beauty. Creativity. Okay, so after obtaining the opening slot for Arsenal, Ooh. Drew invites Sherry to have a picnic in the hills overlooking Los Angeles, and and <laughs> he sings "Waiting for a Girl Like You." I've been waiting. Okay. Yeah. You and get it's it, like Drew. Really good. Get it. Get it, Drew. Get it. And he like rolls up in his car, and she like comes out, and it's like, oh, hello, lady. It's like, whoa. <laughs> Ooh. It gets hype. Um, Drew got the confidence now. He's opening for Arsenal. He being hoping. Um, so there, once they're on their little picnic, he mistakenly suggests that the two are merely friends to calm their nerves, disappointing both of them and ruining the date. Oh, what a dummy. Drew, you dummy. Yeah. Um, when uh, in one's versions that I've seen, so they're like on their picnic date, right? And they're singing waiting for a girl like you it's like going back and forth between the two of them and like there's like freeze things where like drew's frozen and she's like all like dancing around him and it's all like sexual and like whoa but he's like frozen so he doesn't know what's happening oh and then she sits back down and they're at the picnic again and he's like so um uh do you want a drink and it's all like awkward and nervous like kid like you know what i mean it's really interesting because it's like Whoa. It's oh. like it's like showing uh like it's like showing a physical manifestation of like what she's feeling at the yeah, time. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's and so cool. it's like, oh, they both have all these feelings, but when we're actually like unfrozen and right they there in front of each other, it. it's like awkward. Yeah. And then he's like, Oh, we're just friends, it's fine. And then they're both like Ugh. 
and like Oof. Lonnie rolls out because he's a narrator and it like pauses and he's like, man, you messed up, Drew. What'd you do, man? <laughs> it's so funny because like Lonnie's Oof. like best friends with the audience because he's like totally like watching the story as it's happening with right. them. That's like a capital O-O-F. Yeah. Capital oof. Big ol' oof. Okay, so Stacy Jacks arrives at the Bourbon and gives an interview about his life and sings Wanted, Dead or Alive. Ooh, I love that and song. And it's hype. He's like drinking whiskey throughout the song and all the like dancer ladies are like all dancing around him and like pawing at him and stuff because he's Stacy Jacks. Mm-hmm. Um, That's cool. Yeah. Sherry is immediately smitten with him, of course. And believing she means nothing, nothing, nothing <laughs> to Drew, has sex with Stacy in the men's room. And they sing, I want to know what love is. No. Yeah. Yeah. It's hardcore. No. <laughs> no. My so, man Drew. <laughs> Drew's just sad, you know. Oh, does he find out? Like, does he know that that happened? We'll like, like out. as it happens? Well, I know. Okay. So, while Stacy and Sherry are copulating... <laughs> Drew opens for Stacy and Arsenal, not knowing a record producers in the audience listening to him, okay? After their tryst, Stacy tells Dennis to dismiss Sherry before the concert begins. He's literally like, okay, get rid of her. I had her. You don't need her here anymore. Really? Yeah. So wait, they're having sex while Drew is opening for the band? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's so effed, dude. Yeah. Oh, man. Like the worst possible And then he's situation. just like, all right, get rid of her. Yeah! Wow, what a scoop. And she's like, what? I just, I, I want to know what love is. And he's like, blah, blah, go away. What a scumbag. Y'all, Stacy Jacks. Dang. <laughs> okay. Dang. So, that sucks. Next, reading, reading, learning. Okay. His guitarist realizes what Stacy did and knocks him out. Oh, hell yeah. Big old fight scene, like, right in the middle of, like, the whole show, like, halftime thing, right? Um, the record producer in the club was impressed with Drew's performance and suggests he take over for Stacy. He then offers Drew a contract, which he accepts. Sherry seeks comfort from Drew after she's fired because Dennis does fire her because he's like, Stacy, I really need you to play the show. I'll do whatever you say because we need the money so that we don't get demolished. Right, so he right. does whatever he says. Yeah. Did they sing a song during the fight scene? Um, I, there's definitely music, but I think it's just instrumental. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I guess it'd be so cool if they were like, Saturday night's the night for fighting. <laughs> yeah. That'd be dope. <laughs> Okay, so um, he accepts. So again, Sherry seeks comfort, comfort, comfort from Drew after she's fired. But having seen her go into the men's room with Stacy, he dismisses her. So he saw what she did. Oh. And he's like, "Nope, you don't care about me." But she thought he didn't care about her, so she went for it. You know what I mean? Right. It's like a whole circle of bad. Okay, and then they sing. Come on, feel the noise. Nice. And Another that's like banger. his like song that Drew sings taking over for Stacy because Stacy's knocked the freak out somewhere in the That's bar. cool. Yeah. This sounds dope. I want to see this <laughs> it's one. It's so good. Okay. So in the midst of these events, Regina continues her protest. She out here protesting. <laughs> so it like cuts over to her and she's like, we're not going to take it one more time around. Nice. <laughs> okay. So. And um, uh, ha, ha. an upset and unemployed Sherry meets Justice Charlier, the owner of the nearby Venus Club, which Justice prefers to call a gentleman's club. Ooh. If you know what I mean. Yeah, I get what's going on. Okay, so she relates to, I'm not explaining what's going on. She relates to Sherry's story saying that many of the small town girls hoping to hit it big in LA end up making a living as strippers. And that's just that. And she's like, get over it, honey. So um, grudgingly, Sherry accepts Justice's offer to work in her club. And she sings, Harden My Heart slash Shadows of the Night. Another medley. Mm. I'm gonna harden my heart. It's like hardcore because she's like sad and she's crying because she just lost Drew like totally because of right. what she did. Also, Stacey Jacks doesn't care about her. Her parents don't believe in her and they stop supporting her and don't care about her. And she feels like she's all alone. And she meets justice on the street and she's like, it's okay. It happens, dude. I got you. 
and Justice is like the like mom, like total like big mama, like I got your back, honey. You need some love, honey. Yes, yes. <laughs> and she's like, I'm gonna harden my heart and do what I need to do to be an actress. So yeah. Wow. Hype. As the act closes, everyone is alone. Drew, as an upcoming rock star, alone. Sherry, fending for herself as an exotic dancer, alone. Regina, protesting the redevelopment, alone. <laughs> and Dennis, trying to save his club, alone. Um, oh. And everyone sings, Here I Go Again. Here I go again on, on my own. own. And it's hype. And then, like, at the end, they, like, pause because the song's, like, almost over. And then Lonnie's like, okay, jazz hands, guys, jazz hands. And everybody's like, oh, okay. And it's like, <laughs> jazz hands. like, it's, like, a totally funny thing because we have to break the fourth wall every three seconds, you know? That's funny. Yeah. And that's the end of Act 1. Okay. Okay. <sighs> Act 2. Herz and Franz begin... To <laughs> Herz and Franz. <laughs> ...begin demolition on the Sunset Strip. Oh. Alienating them from each other as Franz falls for Regina and sees the error of their ways. Franz oh. is like, we can't be doing this, okay? I talked to Regina and we like got to know each other a little bit and like, she's right, we can't take away all the culture this place has. And they like, they definitely like start to fall for each other a little bit. Ooh. There's like this moment when they're like standing in front of each other and they're like really close to each other, just looking at each other. And then she's like, Bye. And leaves. <laughs> and they're like, so Sherry and Drew are like that, like, uber romantic kind of love, you know, the main love story, right? Right. And then Franz and Regina are like the awkward, funny love story on the side that's really f just quite enjoyable to watch happen. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So he sat and he's um, like, Dad, no. Okay. Dennis and Lonnie join the fight with little success. And the second act opens with a giant slow mo fight scene between. Everybody from the bourbon room and the cops with, like, sticks, like, taking everybody down, cuffing them, like, no more fighting. And they sing the final countdown. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. Yeah. That's dope. It's really cool. And it's, like, slow-mo, and they're, like, fighting, and there's, like, oh, like, big choir sounds happening in the back. It's cool. That is cool. Okay. So, Drew's rocker image is upsetting the record producer and sherry is learning how things work at the venus club and they sing any way you want it slash i want to rock but as a reprise and so they're sad and things are not working out because men at the venus club like take advantage of these girls they're like no i'm not doing that and they're like you're doing it here's some money do it oh i'm paying you do any it. way you want it that's the way you need it any way you want it it fits. Yep, yep. Okay. And so when they meet on the street, Sherry is embarrassed about her job as an exotic dancer, and Drew's upset that his record company is attempting to reshape him into part of a hip hop boy band called the Z Guys as Joshua Z. <laughs> so his his producer's trying to make him like into the opposite of everything that he's wanted. Uh, to no, be. Arsenal! <laughs> yeah! Arsenal! <laughs> okay, so they argue, and Sherry admits that she was crazy about Drew and that he, she, like, really liked him, but failed to make a move because he said they were friends. They part ways more troubled by these new revelations, and they sing high enough. Can you take me high enough? But it's really good, like, oh my gosh, the duet of them is so beautiful. Gotcha. Kills me, kills me, it's so pretty. Okay, so, a drunken, let me make sure I didn't just flip too many pages, okay. <laughs> <laughs> a drunken Stacy arrives at the Venus Club, where Sherry works, oh. and is pleased to see Sherry. Oh. He's so creepy and gross at this point. Um, I feel slimy when you say his name now. Right? Stacy Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> okay. After being forced to give him a lap dance, she beats him up while dancing. Oh, hell yeah. And so she's singing, I hate myself for loving you. And he's singing Heat of the Moment. And she's, like, giving him a lap dance and then, like, punching him in the face mid-booty swing. Like, it's hype. <laughs> heat of the Moment. That's the heat of the yeah. moment. Right? And he's like, no, no, it's the heat of the moment. I just, I didn't know what I was doing. And she was like, I hate myself for loving you. 
boom, bada, bing, punch it in the pool. I hate myself. Yep. I'm trying to remember. Loving it's been so long since I've heard some of these. Like, whenever you say them, I'm trying to play them in my head. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heck okay. yeah. So that's hype. Um, Drew arrives to admit his feelings for her, but becomes angry when he sees the two in a suggestive position and storms off. Oh my god. Yo. <laughs> Stacey Jacks ruining everything always. Um, Justice later tells Drew that he, that as soon as he left, Sherry had punched Stacy in the jaw. Like, she, like, straight Clocked up knocked him ass. out. Yeah. Heck him. He's getting punched by everyone. So, Regina. We're back at Reginaville, okay? She continues... Don't say that. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> she continues her protest against the destruction of the strip, but yields no success. She's having a lot of trouble. All right, she convinces Franz to stand up to his father if he does not believe in his father's vision. Franz admits that he has his own dream, namely to open a confectioner's store in Germany. He just wants to be a baker. That's what, what a confectioner? Yeah. That's what they call bakers? Confections, like pastries. Like a convection oven? Yeah. Convectioner? Yeah. Or is it with an F? I think, yeah. With an F. <clears throat> confection. Okay. All right. Walk Somebody into Dunkin let Donut. me know if I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm going to walk into, I'm I'm walk into Dunkin Donuts and be like, young confectioner, come here. <laughs> Let me have one of your finest manager's choice donuts. Mm. Oh, God. Confectioner! Confectioner, my donut is cold. Confectioner. My, my pastry was not baked properly, confectioner. <laughs> Look at the holes. <laughs> okay. This one does not have holes. Where's the hole? Where's the hole? Confectioner. <laughs> okay, this is going to They would on actually pick you up. <laughs> okay, so... He rebels against his father and admits his love for Regina. Go, Franz! And you know what they sing? Hit me with your best shot. Ban -dan -dan. Is that okay. And they're like, he like, so in the one that we did, he mm -hmm. like ripped his like suit nice clothes off and he was wearing like a sparkly unitard underneath. And then Regina ripped her like activist like green like grungy clothes off and she had a sparkly unitard that was the exact same and they were matching and they're like doing this dance together and it's all hype and yeah yeah that sounds pretty 80s pretty 80s <laughs> <laughs> pretty hype oh okay did they have large extremely blonde wigs no not enough time to like put the wig on and gotcha. also rip the clothes off yeah we only have so much time in the dance okay so meanwhile dennis and lonnie upset at the loss of the bourbon room Admit that they have feelings for each other. Who? I'm, I'm gonna give you a second to take that in. Dennis and Lonnie, narrator and owner of the club. Oh. Admit that they have feelings for each other and they sing, Can't Fight This Feeling. Okay. Yeah. And it gets like really like hardcore because like usually um, Dennis and Lonnie are like older dudes, they're cast as older dudes. Right. So it's like funny to see them all like singing and like swooning over each other after it was like so grungy before and stuff. It's hype. Well, go them. Go them. Go them. Get Frick the fence. Frick the fence. It's back, guys. Somebody make a sticker. I swear. <laughs> swear. <laughs> okay, so Sherry decides to leave the Venus Club after the scene with Drew and Justice tells her that she had a similar experience with her first love. So she's like, oh, baby, honey, it's fine. I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a thing. <laughs> That's funny. Oh. And um, everyone's in turmoil as they attempt to move on with their lives because everything they've wanted is, like, down the drain, crapped. Right. Everyone is in turmoil as they attempt to move on with their lives because everything's gone, they lost everything, sadness, bad. Right. Okay, and they sing, every rose has its thorn. Okay. Yeah. All right, so, Franz leaves for Germany. Oh? And Hertz begins to regret the hurtful way he treated his son. What about Regina? And he sings, keep on loving you. Okay, ready? Okay. Regina arrives and explains to Hertz that Franz does not hate him. He simply wants his father to support his dream. Hertz decides to return the deed to the bourbon room and to Dennis and invest in Franz's confectionery store instead Aww. of, like, demolishing. demolishing the place. Right. Um, and so at that point, like, Regina rolls up and she's like, all right, no one's listening to me. I tried all this protesting. Um, we fought people, like, we did everything, no one's listening to me, it's still going down. She rolls up with a gas can and a lighter, and she's gonna blow the place up with her in it. The bourbon room? Um, no, 
okay, so she's just trying to like make a statement. She's not, I don't think, I misspoke. She's not trying to blow, she's mostly just trying to set herself on fire to be like. I gotcha. For the strip. I don't gotcha. Don't do this, right? Oh my god, that's yeah. hardcore. Regina's hardcore, which is funny because she's like kind of with Franz and they're all lovey-dovey and he's like so sweet and soft and nice, yeah. right? And she's like, And then he just Wait. left to go bake donuts. Well, his dad was like, if you're not going to help me, go home and get out of here. And he's like, okay. Fine, fine Dad. I'll go start my confectioner's store. <laughs> and so confectioner. That's right. Um, and I think, yeah, within that same time, um, Franz, like, goes to Regina. And he's like, I'm leaving. And they're all hanging out together. And he's like, I better go. And she's like, oh, okay, if you have to go. And they, like, hug or kiss, depending on the show. Mm-hmm. And it's just, like, this really sweet, intimate moment, like, oh, at least somebody got to be with somebody <laughs> for a few seconds. Right. <laughs> with everything bad going on. Oh, uh, Sherry got to be with Stacy for a few seconds. Oh, she shouldn't have done that, though. Nope. That was a bad, bad, the bad, 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 bad. That was the bad, bad. <laughs> the bad, bad. But it's okay, baby. I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, everything is wrapped up. Um, Hertz is like, please don't light yourself on fire. Give me that lighter and takes it away from her so she can't make her statement. She's like, eh, frick you, and leaves. Oh, good. Um, <laughs> I was really worried there for a second. <laughs> yeah, no deaths <laughs> in this one. Okay, so Drew, now a pizza delivery boy, oh. realizes none of his dreams have come true. He still is not a rock star, and Sherry is leaving on a midnight train. Lonnie arrives and breaks the fourth wall one more time by explaining to Drew that his life is so miserable because they're all characters in a musical and that it was their book writer who made it so. He's like, dude, you want to know why this sucks? It's a big man's fault. It's the guy who wrote this. What? <laughs> it's freaking Chris. Freaking Chris messed us up, man. What? Breaks fourth wall and Drew's like, what? What are you talking about? He's like, we're in a musical, my guy. Like, Lonnie seems insane to all the other characters at this point, but he, like, actually knows what's going on, right? He's, like, he's seen through the Matrix. Yes, yes. He took the pill. <laughs> he took it. Oh, and he might have taken some. He might have taken more, honestly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, it is the 80s. And he also reveals to Drew that he serves at the he serves as the show's dramatic contour. And that if Drew wants a happy ending, it's up to him to get the girl. After hearing this, Drew realizes that he does not need fame to make him happy. Only Sherry. Oh. And he sings, oh, Sherry. Okay. Heart. Right. My heart. <laughs> My heart. My heart. <laughs> he reaches her at the train station in time, and they realize that their love has survived all their trials. And they reconcile. And they sing, the search is over. Aww. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We're getting to the end. Okay. So, in the epilogue, this is basically like, aw, oh, yay, everything's good now. Let's do a little mini epilogue real quick. Show you guys what what's what now that everything is surpassed. Okay? Gotcha. So, in the epilogue, the bourbon room is spared from demolition. And Stacy Jacks, now a washed up, has been, who has been charged with statutory rape, Flees to Uruguay and um, renegade plays a little bit. To what? He flees to where? To Ur Uruguay. Ur Uruguay. <laughs> Uruguay. Okay. Ur is can it I, Uruguay can, or can I see Uruguay? That? Where is this at? Uruguay. Uruguay? U R U. I think that's pronounced Uruguay. Well, no, that wouldn't make sense. Okay. But I feel like I've heard it pronounced that before. Uruguay? Uruguay. Uruguay. Sure. <laughs> I have no clue, honestly. Somebody please comment. Or I'm pretty sure it's in Africa, though. Check us up in the DMs. Tell us how but to also, say this word. It might be South America. I don't, I'm going to oh, stop because I have no clue what I'm talking about. Needless to say, he's charged for statutory rape of some... So he went to some, like, boarding school of girls and got down with the girls and the people running the school figured it out and started charging him with a bunch of rape cases. So he pieced hard because he's like... Oh my god, what a slime Stacey ball. Stacy gross. Stacy bad. Okay, so Franz opens his confectionery store in Germany and has a long-distance relationship with Regina, who becomes the new mayor of West Hollywood. Oh! Keeping Sunset Strip where it is. Okay. 
You go, Regina. Go, Regina. That means you was the mayor. I was the mayor in the end, yeah. Yay. So, Dennis passes away. Oh. Um, leaving the bourbon room to Lonnie. Okay. And Sherry and Drew move to Glendale and start a family. Oh. Lonnie notes that on the strip, sometimes the dreams with which you enter are not always the dreams with which you leave, but they still rock. And they sing, Don't Stop Believin'. Oh, okay. Finale. Okay. Don't stop. It's like, I, hi. I got chills. Yeah, right? I got, I got chills. chills. I got chills. You're right. You're right. It's good. It's meant to be. It's good. So, yeah, that is Rock of Ages. Wow. It's so good. I think that was my favorite one talking about so far. Really? Yeah, I really want to go see it. Like, I might go try and rent that tonight oh, hi, and go hi, watch hi. it. It's so good. And um, one thing to note, uh, the movie version, um, there's not as much Regina Fraun stuff, really, at all. You see that more in the musical. Um, oftentimes with movie versions, they cut out a few characters or just, like, shadow them down way, way, way more so that they can fit the whole thing into a shorter time span. Um, What's a good place to, like, rent musicals? Well, so there's some app that you can get. I think it's a subscription thing, though. Okay. And it's, like, Broadway Con something dot you. com or something like that. It's kind of like Netflix, but, like, you can see musicals, um, staged ones. Gotcha. Um, and then there's a lot of musicals that were turned into movies that you can watch, like right. Hairspray. Hammers, but it's bad, and there's no music. It's just a movie movie. Right. It's not a musical movie version, just a movie movie version. Yeah. Um, Rock of Ages, what else have we... Rent is a movie musical, yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah, I want to I wanna watch, like, the musical musical. Right, the stage of, ones. Because that's, like, what I'm trying to understand and get into. Yeah. So. Fuck chow. I'll have to look around. Yeah. Um... So, yeah, I really enjoyed that. <laughs> Rock of Ages is a bomb, and I hope that everyone gets a chance to see it in person, whether that's at a community theater. Please support your community theaters. Or that's on or off Broadway or in some big city. Just get out there and see more musicals because the experience, the energy you feel when you're, like, right there in front of someone and they're, like, showing you this whole new story, it's like you're living in it with them. It's really cool. Um, something I wanted to talk about because of the time in which we were in currently, um, is... <laughs> hashtag COVID sucks. Hashtag COVID sucks. Um, is, um, people of color and how they end up interacting with the theater world. Um, a lot of talk has been going around about it and people have been, um, opening up about how oftentimes if they're a person of color, they question why they get the roles they get, you know? Um. Oh, are you talking about, like, when, like, traditionally a character might be, like, white, but a black person gets the character, right. like, that kind of thing. And oftentimes, if someone, like, writes a show, and they are more likely to entrust someone of a Caucasian background to play the main characters than um, African Americans or any person of color. Gotcha. I know that, in my experience, I have never expected to get a lead role in anything, because... I don't see many people of color in lead roles unless it's something about race. And right, it's like they, scripted to be that to way. To be that way, right. Um, and so it's really interesting. Um, let let us know, like, send us a message in the DMs or comment on posts, whatever, and tell us a little bit about your story and how you guys have interacted with the theater world because it's really interesting um, yeah. to see what it's like. And it, it is so interesting because, like, as a person growing up in this day and age, like, I can't, I can't even picture, like, I, I can't put myself in the mindset that's like, oh, he or she is black. They probably won't do a good job as the lead role in my play. Right. Like, like I mean, to me, like, you just look at it objectively. Like, mm -hmm. was their audition good? Right. Are Which... they a good actor or actress, you know? like Yeah. There was a whole thing going on with the whole Ariel thing or whatever, right? When they were like, oh, oh we're yeah. casting like Ariel. I heard about Everyone that. was like, um, is she good at singing? Is she good at acting? Okay, that's it. Whatever. Move on. She's cast because she did the best, right? Um, but it's like, I don't know if it's like a sense of tradition. Um, and most of the people that do end up going to see the shows are more wealthy people because Broadway costs a lot. Right. Um, and oftentimes they're higher class Caucasian people. And so they're 
not that they're actually racist by any means. Nobody. Right. You don't. But it's like what they're used to, right. maybe. And so they might be a little bit less comfortable or less likely to go see a show where an African American or person of color is the lead. They just might not be as a, it might not be as appealing. Right. Not because they feel a certain way, but just because of what they're used to. Right. Yeah. That is interesting. So yeah. So yeah, let us know if you have any like your experience if you. Yeah know of anything that's happened to someone or you personally. Yeah, throw it out there because we're all just trying to make the theater world an amazing place to be yourself and express yourself. Trying to make the world a place of love. Oh, love. Love. Oh, love. Come here, come here, baby. Come here, baby. I love <laughs> oh, Okay, so yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'm so hyped that we're already on listening. the fourth. Oh my gosh. <laughs> thank you for watching your screen as you listen. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, you better have stared at the screen this whole time, this I whole, swear. Like, I will find you. I swear on it. <laughs> oh, thank you though for reals. We're already on our fourth episode and it's crazy the amount of people that are actually listening to us and that we are actually existing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like it's it's really crazy to think it's already been a month. Yeah. That we're like that we're officially a podcast like on Spotify yeah. that the public can listen to whether or not I mean they do, the views right. don't matter. Like we have the ones who are listening and you're the ones who matter right now. Yeah. But you, like you are our true fans. It's it's just so cool. Thank you so guys. Cool. Thanks guys. Um we'll see you next week um with possibly something a little bit less known for some. Okay. Um I'm having some ideas, some thoughts. I want to bring something um less has been made into a movie into this. Um, maybe something that hasn't been made into a movie. <laughs> okay. um, so I'm excited to look around and decide. Uh, but if you have any ideas or thoughts, please let us know always. Don't be afraid to message us on Facebook at Take It To The Stage or Instagram at Take It To The Stage. Um, yeah, be bossy. Be bossy. Be bossy. Big boss. Um, so yeah, thanks guys and we'll see you next time. This was Emerald. And I'm Suf. Bye, guys. We love you.